<laughs> this is why we fish for kokanee. Got him. He left oh, yours and went to this. <laughs> We're at war. Are you, you catching, catching all the fish you should be catching? catching? Hey, what's up guys? Nick the Informative Fisherman here, and we're out here back at New Maloney's Reservoir. Out here to do a little kokanee and trout fishing with Gary Morales of Shasta Tackle, Doug MacArthur of Team MC Fish and Guide Service. Hopefully we're gonna get all over some thick old little chunky kokanee, some early time of year kokanee. They've been running fatter this year. It's uh, 2013 here, and the kokanee are starting to get chunky early. So we're looking forward to a good season. Gary, awesome to have you back out, man. Oh, looking yeah. forward to this. I'm excited. The wind seemed to disappear. The rain disappeared. It's lining up. Yeah. These fish want to be on film. They want it, Doug. They want it. We're going right. to turn them into stars. We're going to put them in front of the lens. Stay with us, guys. So we decided to make a run over to the spillway, but with the wind and the rain in our face, we had to keep the camera in the box for safekeeping. It didn't take very long, and one of my surface rods with a red and brass grip lure got picked up by this company. There we go, one on the crip lure, brass and red. Got him right on top, and normally I won't hold a high rod position on him, but I got so many other lines out. Kokanee, I'm gonna swing him. Oh yeah, that's a good coke, man. There we go. What's wrong with that one? Out here about a week ago, fooling around, and the brass and red crip lure just kept sticking them over everything at that time, so I was like, Hey, let's toss this bad boy on this morning. There you go. Yeah, how often do you catch kokanee on the surface? Hardly ever. But I mean, this conditions right now, it's looking pretty good. I don't think he even realized he was nice, on the surface. Nice fat fish. It'll be about 15, 14, 15 inches by summer. Oh yeah. It's a new rod we're testing out here. I'm not gonna drop any names, but Shasta Tackle's gonna be supplying these rods. Loving it. Look at this bed. Yeah, look at that Look boy. at this bed, look at this action. Now notice, see what I said? Cloudy day, a little bit of rain starting up, and put on the super glow, the pink, and there we are, bud. Fish on. Now what Gary's talking about is a glow-in-the-dark sling blade dodger with extra bright fluorescent colors on the other side. This is gonna better help those kokanee focus in on your presentation with low light and low visibility, followed by that pink hoochie on the back. That's what I mean. real early in the spring right now, and these fish to be this chunky is a good size. Yeah, I want to cover something. A lot of people, a lot of people ask me, how come you're out there chasing a fish this size? If you eat one of these things, you will never ask that question the rest of your life. Okay. My opinion, this is the best table fare. I eat king salmon, you know, I eat halibut. Yeah, I'm all over the place eating fish. And if you eat a kokanee salmon, I'm telling you what, you're gonna be out here chasing these guys, fishing all this cool gear and having a heck of a lot of fun like we are. Fishing casual. Look at that. This is my new puffy rain suit. Available at liquor stores. <laughs> <laughs> you know, when I left home, it was not supposed to rain today, so I, of course, didn't bring my rain coat. What rain? Like the rest of us. Yeah. That looks like a decent fish for sure. Well, that is a decent fish there. Wow. You've got a size hook kokanee that... Yeah, let's try a foul hook. No, that's, that's not a kokanee. <laughs> I don't know. We gotta keep firing off negatives so Gary will throw <laughs> positives in. Now, now probably just a, a foul hook bluegill. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> no, it's a ling. It's a ling cod. Ling cod. Uh, ling cod. Solid ling. Now I guess that is a coke. Huh? That's a coke. Well, and he's he's uh he's spinning, so he's probably got a he probably struck at it. Doug sitting that ego out oh, that way. That's right. Look, you got. You know, that was happening yesterday. A lot of these fish were coming up and striking at the moors. Oh, I got another dodger, that's why. Oh, that's part of it. I don't even know if you're really in the right hole. We'll see what what rod technically had the fish. I don't remember which ones, on which color now. We've switched them around a few times. Take that net there, Gary. Oh, yeah, he is on that. Is he on the pink? Technically. He's on the pink. Yeah, he's on the pink. <laughs> on the pink wiggle. I think he went for both, technically. I think he brought it oh, yeah. over. Oh, yeah. He dropped wiggle the green. He's so, so hungry, he's eating them all. So intense with these wiggle hoochies that the fish are trying to eat every one of them that are out there. Yeah, I'm surprised yeah, he didn't grab time. the other two. Yeah, got him. 
He left yours and went to yeah. this. He went over. <laughs> he went over. <laughs> now in kokanee fishing, we often take the lines closer to the surface and run them further back than our deeper lines. We do about 10, 15 to 20 foot, depending on visibility. And what this does, if a fish short strikes you from below, they often turn and fade upwards and they get another lure in their face. And there you get that second strike opportunity, which is exactly what just happened here. We could have had a triple, you know, if mine wouldn't have got off. Oh yeah. There we go. We're at war. We had it. We had a triple. Oh well, that's a little guy here. <laughs> yeah. Got to be about two limits in about two hours now. Yeah, we're just nailing the, them. Oh, it is a green wiggle. Green wiggle. Nice. There you go. Good job. They don't get away. Another coconut. Another on the pink. On pink. Between the pinks and the greens is me. I'm gonna need my sunglasses to keep this up. Hey, you can't be looking that cool bringing in fish. Woo! Well, this is fun with this rod. I can't wait for my six. I'm not getting one of those. This is give me a good tussle. Man, a fish feels huge on it. By the way, I'm under that line. Keep you down low. There you go. Renaming this episode Smoker. Look at that. <laughs> Look at that. Another on the pink and super glow. Another one. Go ahead and take a bite of that. Ah, Let's know how it tastes good. <laughs> Let's take a peek in the box. Yeah, let's, take a, let's take a look. What do we got? What do we have there? Dinner or we got? Coconut. We should probably open that ice bag now. Come on. Yeah. That shuttle hawk is great for stacking two rods. Leave the bottom one down, shut all come back, send it down again. Only way to go. Look up. Check the horizon. This Looking is really got a cool thing. Looking out here right now, this is kind of neat. You got the misty fog over there and it's coming with sun coming through it. This time the island's kind of shadowed and got a nice fish on. Nice around. I like this. I think we got a bed coconut. Beautiful day, isn't it? Now here we are out fishing. Most people won't even come out in this kind of weather. Look at that. That's the benefit to uh, fishing in the wind is you don't really have to share your spot. Unless you encourage your buddies to get out there with you. Well, that guy's traveling. Might swing a little bit here. Yeah. This one's a swinger. I'm going to start steering my motors again over here. Belly hooker uh, swiped it. Yeah. That happened. Yeah. The kokanee, the kokanee get in there that, and they're irritated. Yeah, look at this. And, and look at this. See this rod? This is how great this thing loads up. The kokanee get in there, get irritated, and slash at the lure. They're not really necessarily trying to eat these things, they're trying to hurt these things. So a lot of the time you get them like that and they start going crazy, it makes it all that much more entertaining to hook these bad boys. This is why we fish for kokanee. Oh, that was gone. Oh, one down. I see the other one though. He's coming. He's jumping. It's a three-point territory right there <laughs> yeah. from outside. Ah, uh, little guy. That was on the pink, and then this one uh, was on the green gator spinner hoochie, and yesterday that was a hot ticket. But uh, today the pink's been doing really pretty well, too. Oh, yeah. Stay with us, guys, and when we come back, it'll be back to smashing more kokanee. Hey, what's up guys? Nick the Informative Fisherman here, and when it comes to spooling up my reels, I choose nothing less than the best, and that's why I use P-Line each and every time. Are you fishing the best? Hey, Lion Baby. <laughs> hey, Lion. 
Did you ever wish for an RC boat when you were a kid? And do you have a passion for fishing? Well guess what? It's time to do them both at the same time. With RCFishingWorld.com's RC Fishing Pole, it's time to be a kid again. So visit www.RCFishingWorld.com today. Ever try pulling a planer board next to your boat when trolling or fishing from a swift current bank? If not, you're missing out on one of the most phenomenal fish catching machines on the market today. With Yellowbird planer boards pulling your lines perpendicular to your boat, you can't help but catch more fish. Find out more by visiting www.yellowbirdproducts.com. Have you been to RustyLures.com? Did you know they offer free shipping on anything over $29.99? And with all the latest and greatest in bass fishing gear from punching tackle, umbrella rigs, swim baits, and you name it, there's really no reason for you not to be getting the best deal online today. So go to www.rustylures.com. Have you had the chance to fish the baddest hoochie on the market today? That's right, I'm talking about the Shasta Tackle Wiggle Hoochie, one of the most dynamic reaction trout and salmon lures that runs second to no other for pulling and triggering fish into striking. So I guess the real question is, are you catching all the fish you should be catching? Thanks for watching guys, now let's get back to smashing them. I'm just going to swing this guy, don't worry about the net. Feels pretty small. Yeah, hey, look at the length, dude. Yeah, length's good. A little thin. There you go. <laughs> there you go. Ariel. That's fun. Ariel, bro. Mini tarpon. That last little, uh... That last little, uh, jump on him. Whoa, look at the lens on that man. Oh, that's, that's a good one. That's, that's, that's the best one in the box today. That's on that green again. Green wiggle. Green wiggle. Watermelon diamond bag. Wiggle wiggle. <laughs> <laughs> let's try that again. Take two. Take here. three. Oh, three. Yeah, let's take three on that. Uh, that's that watermelon diamond pattern sling blade with the green wiggle hoochie. Found out yesterday and the day before that the green was actually out doing the pink, so we started putting everything green. And uh, last year it was all flame orange. This year it's been green. Yeah, it's weird. Never know, do you? No, well, we figured it out though. Trying to set the second rod again, and I keep popping him on the bottom rod. Oh. I don't know. One of the two greens. <laughs> I'm using the, the only thing I'm using is the green peewee and then the green wiggle. Yeah. Coming at you. So what I was doing here was top lining two rods out of Doug's tower. Uh, basically the rod holders were sticking straight up so the rods were completely clear of anything else we had going on in the boat. Even our other top lines were set, you know, 80 to 100 feet back because I had a 150 foot setback and a 170 foot setback. And so I just set the drag reel loose. So when a fish does take it, you just hear that drag screaming off. You reach up, take it down out of the rod holder and there you go. You got another hookup. No other rods are in the way. Real pretty. pretty purple in here. There we go. Another one. That's number 18. 18 at the three hour mark. Little fella. Now that's that green spinner which that was the hot one yesterday, yesterday but today it hasn't in the hot it's not, it's not, not the same spot, see? No spots on the back in that one. Yep. Don't have all the spots like those other, some of those we've got. That's true. So I'm just going to go whoa, ahead and whoa. catch Doug's fish. Well, Doug you talks get about the one. other fish I just caught. Talk about the one he has with no spots on it. Maybe the one he's got now on my side over here will have the spots on it. I seem to catch those. Hey, how come we have no rods in the water? Because they all keep getting fish on them. Problem. You come up? Oh, there he is. Nope. Yep. There he is. I want to just let him ride it out. <laughs> <laughs>
There we go. And that's on the Kripla. I just put that pink and uh, glow Crippler down. And there you are there. Well, right now I'm uh, running 50 feet and I got a shuttle hop stack in my second rod. So about 10 feet above that. So this fish actually hit at about 40. I like to spread them about 10 feet usually. There we go. There we are. Now, cripplers, cripplers aren't typically known, you know, people said that's a trout lure, but I'll tell you what, I catch a lot of kokanee on cripplers. That pink glow is one of my favorites. So you notice the kokanee we're catching for early spring like this are a lot bigger than what we had on the prior Maloney's episodes. Well, they were doing a lot of stocking back then, but Doug, Doug was just telling me that they've cut it, what, this year? The, the last two years has been cut in half, according to Fish and Wildlife that I talked to. Cut in half because of uh, the over uh, abundance of the, the kokanee actually spawning themselves. They're actually self-sustaining. Yeah. Uh, this year they told me they're not gonna plant this year and possibly next year to see if we continue that growth less fish less uh, uh fight for the food yeah they're not fighting over all the plankton out there yeah, yeah. Uh, so far we're catching fish now the size of what we had to catch late in the season last year yeah the, they're not having to fend off each other and try to get, gorge themselves on food they're not sharing a huge school's not sharing yeah. so already we're seeing growth difference in the kokanee the length the girth for this early yeah what was it august we are, when we were hitting yeah. fish like that we are exactly a year from what uh, we did this last year yeah. so uh, looks like maloney's gonna produce some quality fish at the end of this summer next year probably even be phenomenal even better yeah oh yeah but so we're, we're still hitting oh. i mean we're just smashing them out here we're catching and releasing for a little while here to have some fun and we're just absolutely smashing them now luckily we got doug manning the controls up here but when you're fishing the wind and you're trolling you either have to fish directly into it or have it to your back but a lot of the time with kokanee you got to get down to one mile an hour sometimes even less up to 0.8 and if you have the wind to your back if it's strong like this sometimes you might just be moving too fast for them so a lot of the time instead of trying to make big loops and loop around cover your favorite area pick up drop down with the wind point back into it to utilize your fishing time Take a look around. Nobody else is out here. We're smashing fish. Oh yeah, it's just unreal. We have all the room we could possibly want on the water. The fish aren't seeing anything else. There's no pressure. And the fishing's on fire. The only thing this is doing is working up the food, getting those bait fish going around, getting everything excited, getting them all going, hit our plugs like this. So don't stay at home just because it's windy. Enjoy it. At least there's no dust on my face, my clothes. We're nice and dry. We could fly a kite out here if we wanted to, but instead we're cracking fish, right? The one thing you don't want to do though is come out here in too small of a boat though. That's yeah. one thing you gotta be careful with. <laughs> yeah. Now, Doug's got a nice deep V boat here and we're plenty safe out here today. Yeah, Doug's boat is not bothered by this wind at all. No. <laughs> all the different rivers. We're, um, we're out running up the Angels Creek Arm because Nick got a good reporter when well, you were up here the other day. Huh? We're hammering a lot of them. Eh? Coming up here to catch some nice trout back up in here and switched up to some other baits. Uh, little flea bitties, little shad pattern there, and feeding on shad up here. And then we got some larger humdingers so we can run uh, a little faster speeds. These these baits, both those baits, the large humdinger and the flea bitty, we can run two and a half to four miles an hour. Kind of plan there. We'll see what we can do. What we've got going with this, we've got the top lines out. Those are the large chumdingers. We run them, those right on the surface. The flea bitties will dive about five feet or so. That's about 150 feet back. We'll go about 100 with the flea bitty. It'll dive about five, and that way we won't have any issues with tangling things up. This is where line counters come into play. They're crucial, okay? You need to make your spread, set it right. Often we'll run 200 on both the top lines, run shallower on your diving baits, and that way when you're turning, you keep them equal distance. When you make your turns, you got less chance of, of tangling. Line counters help you a lot there. Look at that! I set that thread! <laughs> I gotta be careful because this is this is only six pound D line we got on here. 
Wow, that hammer. Go ahead and clear this one for me. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Wow, that thing hit. This has got some muscle to it, too. This is great. Oh, dude, the Boy, man. Woo, look at that. Look at that, man. He's just surging. Powerful fish. I think this is going to take a while. <laughs> I'm, I'm back. Gonna, I'm going to clear all the lines. I'm right? two, look at that fish. I was at 150 feet back. I'm now at 240. He took 100 feet. Oh, 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 oh. Look at this guy. I am not getting anything on this guy. I've got our speed yeah, I've cut. by a mile an hour. Look, I can't get it. He <laughs> ran 100 feet. 100 feet like that. <laughs> yeah, he's stopping me right there, man. He's good. Wow. Oh, I love this. This is good. We should have started this a little earlier. <laughs> we're out here. We've already got, well, we're real close to limits on Kokanee right now. We left Kokanee to come chase some of these trout Nick was telling us about. I tell you, I love trout fishing, and that thing hit right there, man. I'm pumping right now. <laughs> this has got some weight to it. Woo! You know, you don't hear a lot of people talk about, about rainbow trout in this lake. You know, I mean, I always hear everybody talk, you know, you always talk about the kokanee and some nice browns in here. I, I had no idea there was trout in here like this. Look at this guy, he's up near you the know, surface right now. Realistically, a lot of the people here, they get out here and they find a lot of the planters. Yeah. Yeah, and they catch a lot of the planters. The holdovers in this lake, you really gotta find them. Oh, yeah. That's really what it comes down to. That's me, man. Love it. Okay, I've got, uh, still got 125 to go yet. You got them on the surface. You might have a, you might have a bass there. Uh, I don't, uh, I don't think so. But it, I don't know, he's not fighting much now. He took too much line. We'll see. Together. I don't know, it almost looks like we've got a foul hook here now. It may have slipped out of his mouth and got yep. it the tail. Could have. This is a fat company, I'm gonna laugh. <laughs> <Man>. <laughs> oh, that's exactly, unless it wrapped him. We might have wrapped. Nope, he wasn't big at all. A little trout. Look at that. that's, now look at look what happened there. Right in the tail, that's what happened. <laughs> When you right, get a, a fish in the pose. wrong end, look look at that. what's the chances of that happening? <laughs> right that fish, the you'd have thought fish. he was six pounds the way he was gripping <laughs> the line. Huh. Huh. Right. Don't let him go. Yeah, that'll be a nice safe release. Yep. Didn't even have to worry about her. Now, that is a first for me. I, I don't think I've ever caught a fish in the adipose. Yeah, oh, squared, huh? That's a native fish. Yeah, yeah squared tail. Nice squared tail. Wow. wow, excellent. It's good to know they're still out here. Yeah. He's gone. You know, one thing about natives too, I should have figured that was a native the way he was ripping line. They're so strong compared to just, you know, your, your normal planter. Yep. Big difference. Well, I tell you, I got my blood going. I'm a little disappointed he wasn't five pounds. <laughs> <out. laughs> and another one. There we go. Oh, you put down your favorite. Oh, yeah. The pink, the Flomo. Flomo. With a teaser grub. Had to eat it. Just had to. Yeah. Got the memo. All righty. Good times. With the wind gust picking up to well over 30 miles an hour and our limits in the boat, it was time to head back in. Man, talk about smashing them. <laughs> and there we go. That's another day out here on New Malona's Reservoir with Doug from Team MC Fishing Guide Service, Gary Morales of Shasta Tackle for a half a day and getting blown off the lake. Four limits, not bad. Like it. <laughs> Get you some. Hey, Shasta Tackle, all day. One, two, three. Are you, you catching, catching all the fish you should, should be catching? catching? <laughs>